Deuteronomy 4 verse 24 For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Hebrews 12 verse 28 The writer of Hebrews wants to challenge Christians to never get lazy when it comes to their theology about God. He is telling them and us to always approach God with reverence and godly fear, to not play games with God or religion. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews 10 verse 31 The church was bought with a heavy price. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How many of us would crucify a person we totally love to save a wretched and undeserving person? None of us. I can tell you now I wouldn't, but God did. Romans 5 verse 8 But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is a very rare thing to find someone willing to die for someone because they love them. Certainly, there are acts of heroism to be found where someone was willing to give up their own life for someone else. However, no one is willing to lay down his life for an enemy that hates him. But that is exactly what Jesus Christ did for us. Christ died for us while we were still sinners and an enemy to God. God loves us at a very unusual level. In all honesty, there is something strange and unusual about the love of God for us. We will never be able to understand it, but we can trust in His amazing love to help us in our trials today. God is worthy of our love and respect. He has done so much for all of us. I want to go over three examples from the Bible where people took God for granted and where God demonstrated Himself to be a God of consuming fire and what we can learn from those experiences. Number 1. Aaron's Sons Offering Strange Fire Aaron was the first of the priests that God instituted, that being of the Levitical or Aaronic variety. In an illustration of consuming fire, God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, calling on him to demand that Pharaoh of Egypt would free the Israelites, which prompted Moses to find a way to escape serving the Lord. Exodus 4 verse 14, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. Many years later, Aaron's sons Abihu and Nadab were both destroyed by a consuming fire when they offered a wicked sacrifice known in the Bible as strange fire. By doing this, they showed their utmost disregard not only for God's commands, but also unto the holiness of God, thereby testifying that they did not honor him in holy fear. God wants us to clearly know that He is serious when it comes to His honor and glory. God is clear. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye not sons. Number 2. Elijah versus the Prophets of Baal The Prophets of Baal desperately called upon their false god to rain fire from heaven, but failed. Then it was Elijah's turn, where he built an altar and called upon the Lord, and God sent fire down from heaven, totally consuming the sacrifice. While it's easy to see why most non-Christian people today do not have a reverence for God, what is even more scary is finding out that people who go to church feel the same way. Judging by the fruit, there is a growing group who do not really believe our God is a consuming fire. Number 3. The Destruction of the Assyrians God told Isaiah to prophesy the destruction of the Assyrian Empire because they went against Almighty God and persecuted His people. It was during all of this that Isaiah refers to the tongue of the Lord as a consuming fire. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue as a devouring fire. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall shew the lightning down of his arm. With the indignation of his anger, 
and with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. Conclusion God's holiness is why he is referred to as a consuming fire. His holy nature burns up anything that is unholy. The holiness of God is what separates God from sinful man. The prophet Isaiah said the same thing. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings? And his conclusion was, He that walketh righteously, and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks, bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. Isaiah 33 verse 14 Through the gospel of his beloved Son, God has provided the righteousness we need by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. Jesus experienced the consuming fire for us. He died so that we may live. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 Christians do not fear the consuming fire of God's wrath if they are covered by the blood of Christ, which purifies them. Let us remember that this world and everything we have is only temporary. If our faith and hope is in Jesus Christ, we are part of a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Therefore, understanding that our days on earth are numbered and that our God is a consuming fire, let us serve Him and invest in things that are indeed imperishable. 1 Peter 1.16 Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness is not optional for a child of God. The writer of the Hebrew letter issues similar instructions when he writes, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's Hebrews 12, 14. These scriptures let us know that holiness is an absolute requirement for every Christian. We could even go so far as saying, No holiness, no heaven. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Everything God is and everything he does is holy. He is regularly described as the Holy One or the Holy One of Israel. God's holiness is unique and incomparable. Even the angels who are described as the holy angels who have never sinned, are described to bow down before God in awe of His holiness. Make sure you subscribe to the new Line of Judah Prayer channel. Click the link in the description.